our notes, Unit 1, Section 5, Gravitation. This is Part 3, the final part of this section, Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation. Well, Sir Isaac Newton um, had the genius to spot that the same invisible force which pulled an apple down from the tree to the ground was the same force that was pulling the moon down towards the earth as it orbited. Um, so he developed this universal law of gravitation which describes the force between any two bodies which have mass. <clears throat> it's universal because it is uh, known to apply throughout the whole universe uh, everywhere. So uh, what is the law about? Well, if we imagine two bodies Uh, let's make this one not point three kilograms, and then a different body. Let's make this one not point not five uh, kilograms, and how far apart they are from each other is important. And we always measure the distance between two bodies from their geometric centres. So if we deal with spheres as we are here, we go from the centre of one to the centre of the other. So quite important if you're dealing with, say, planets, you go from the geometric centre, not from the surface. So the separation distance of uh, these two would be this, and we'll call that separation distance r. And let's make r be 25 centimeters in this case. Let's call this mass m1 and let's call the second mass M2. Well, what Newton realized was that mass M1, simply by virtue of having the property of mass, exerted a gravitational pull, an attractive force on M2. So M1 pulls on M2. Now let's draw that force in. So here is the force, we'll call it F, that M1 exerts on M2, pulling it towards itself. But of course, um, M1 uh, has mass and therefore can do that. But M2 has mass and can also exert a pull. So it also exerts a pull back on M1. Now, Newton's third law must apply if body A exerts a force on body B, then body B exerts an equal and opposite force on body A. So the size of that force F is the same on each. Okay. Uh, notice, of course, that uh, the force on M2 is acting in our diagram to the left, whereas the force on M1 is acting to the right. So they've got different directions and they're acting on different bodies, but they have the same magnitude. Now, what uh, Newton uh, realised was that the size of this force F was directly proportional to the two masses multiplied together, but inversely proportional to the square of their separation distance R. Now, in maths, if one quantity is directly proportional to some other quantity, then we can make the relationship into an equation by bringing in the constant of proportionality. So there is some constant such that this gravitationally attractive force F equals that constant times m1, m2 over r squared. And we now know and have proved experimentally 
that this constant uh, is G, the universal gravitational constant. So we end up with this equation, F equals GMM over R squared. Now we now know that the size of G, the universal gravitational constant, is very small. It's to three significant figures, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And if you rearrange for G, the units you end up with are meters cubed the grams to the minus one seconds to the minus two. Uh, that of course will always be in the data tables. And this equation, this law, applies to all masses. Um, but because g is very small, the force between two everyday objects is really uh, quite uh, tiny. So if we now apply the equation to our two little bodies above, let's let's see what force 0.3 kilograms would have on 0.05 kilograms separated by 0.25 of uh, a meter. So uh, to do so we get the solution and we list all of our uh, variables. Well f is the unknown obviously, m1 three kilograms m2 0 0.05 kilograms and r the separation distance 0 0.25 meters and g of course we look that up from the tables of data 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram per second squared. Right, well there we are. We now pop that data into the equation. Always state the equation first. Following your variable list of course. And in goes the data, state the equation first, and then immediately substitute the data. Don't rearrange in case you make a mistake, because you'll get marks for correctly substituting the data. I think it's a good idea to put brackets around expressions like that when you're squaring them. Um, so you get your calculator and you do that and you should get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons is the force. This of course is an extremely small force. That's why we don't all wander about and stick to each other because the force of friction between our feet on the ground is considerably bigger than, than that. Um, frictional forces will be of the order of newtons. So we don't really feel the gravitational pull for everyday masses. However, once your body has a mass which is of the order of 10 to the 11 newtons, then you're getting into forces of newtons. And of course, if you're, one of your bodies gets you know, very large, then the forces become very large and that's why we feel weight because the mass of the Earth is so large. So planetary forces and stellar forces are very, very big um, because their masses are very, very big. Okay, um, final little bit on gravitational field strengths. So if we imagine the Earth and a person standing on the surface of the Earth, 
then we know that they are uh, pulled down by the gravitational pull uh, of the Earth. So um, if we draw a free body diagram for that uh, person, the force with which the planet is pulling them down is of course called weight. And weight, as you know, is given the simple expression uh, W is mg. Um, g being the gravitational field strength of the planet. But we can now apply Newton's universal law of gravitation because that person can be thought of as standing a distance r away from the geometric centre of the Earth where all of its mass can be uh, thought of, of acting. So we can consider uh, the Earth as being m1, its mass acting at that point, and the person being the mass m2. And they're separated by this distance um, r. Well, uh, if we know the gravitational field strength uh, at the point where we're taking the weight, then it's a well-known number. We can um, equate the simple weight equation, W is mg, with the gravitational attraction force from the universal law of gravitation. So in other words, what we can say is that mg um, equals g m1 m2 over r squared. Now in the mg equation, m is of course the mass of the person, so that's m2. Now if you look at that equation, I think you can see that the m2s are going to cancel. And you're left then with an expression for the gravitational field strength of any planet. It is simply g m1, the mass of the planet, over r squared. Um, you don't need to memorize that equation, but you should be able to set up the equation and essentially derive it just by doing uh, what I have just done.